Hello, I'm Pastor David Reich from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church of Fox Chapel, and this video is for August the 9th, 2020, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Help! Essentially, that's the prayer uttered by St. Peter in the passage appointed for today from the Gospel according to Matthew. It's very similar to what we say when we say the words of the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What we're asking with those words is that God would not deny our prayers on the basis of our sins, but instead would give us all things by grace. And experiencing that grace of God through Christ, we wish to be faithful we wish to be witnesses of the grace we have received and extend it to those around us. Just as we've been forgiven, we also wish to forgive others. I hope that this video blesses you today, that you hear God's word in it and are girded in faith to face whatever challenges may be before you in the coming week. A reading from 1 Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, 
I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in the pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. And a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. 
Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the reading. One word was used almost more than any other in that passage read from the Gospel according to Matthew. That word was fear. Even though life is very different for us today than it was for Peter and the other disciples in the first century, fear remains. It's something common to all of us. For example, several years ago, during the first week that my family and I lived in Florida, we were putting things away, getting settled, when we heard in the evening this absolutely blood-curdling scream, and it kept going on and on and on. Well, we ran to find out what was happening. It was our youngest daughter. She had gone to get in the shower, had closed the shower curtain, turned on the water, and before her eyes, she saw something that native Floridians call a palmetto bug. Now, to us here in the north, a palmetto bug is about a two-inch long cockroach. She was terrified. In fact, it so traumatized her, the sight of that bug there in the shower when she was vulnerable, that for the next two years, every time she went to take a shower, somebody had to go check things out beforehand to make sure there were no bugs there. And even for a good long time after, she demanded that either her mother or her sister be with her there in the bathroom while she showered. She was afraid of what one of those bugs, as harmless as it might seem to us in our more logical moments, what one of those bugs could do to her. There are other times when our fears come from our past failures. We fear what punishment awaits us as a result of the things that we've done in the past. Both of these kinds of fears were evident in that passage from the Gospel according to Matthew. When the disciples saw Jesus walking toward them on the water, they were afraid. That scene was almost reminiscent of what we heard last week concerning Herod. Herod was afraid when he heard about Jesus. He thought that Jesus was actually the same kind of spirit active in John the Baptist and come back to haunt him for all of the wicked things that he had done. We also heard about Peter on the water. We heard that as Peter was walking towards Jesus on the water, he saw the wind and the waves and he became afraid, and that's when he began to sink. He lost sight of Jesus. He became fixated on what the wind and the waves could do. Yet, even in the midst of his fears, there seemed to be some small inkling of faith that remained. Even as he sank, even as he was afraid of what the winds and the waves might do to him out there exposed, he cried out. He did not resign himself to a certain fate of drowning. He cried out, Lord, save me, help. It takes faith to cry out or to pray that way. 
wonderfully, gracefully. Jesus didn't deny Peter's request for help. The same abundant compassion that healed and fed that crowd of more than 5,000 came also to Peter there in that moment on the choppy waters. Jesus reached out and grabbed Peter. When Jesus spoke to Peter, he did not minimize the dangers that surrounded them, nor did he say that those fears weren't real. Instead, he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Those words of Jesus seemed to have less to do with criticism than they did with guiding P Peter into the future. Following Jesus means trusting his word and his power to create a promised future we can't even yet see, even more than we trust the dangers we can see and that terrify us. In his commentary on this passage from the Gospel according to Matthew, Stanley Hauerwas has made an important point. He said that our goal as Christians is not just merely to survive, it's not to perpetuate ourselves or an institution, it's not to save somebody or someone. No, our goal as Christians in all of these things is to be faithful. The question is, how does that happen? Well, we begin to see an answer in this passage from the Gospel according to Matthew. It happens with those first timid steps of obedience taken by Peter. Peter wanted permission. He needed a word of command that would overcome his fears. While he was still in the boat, and he was frightened because of the image of Jesus he saw coming toward him, he said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. It's similar to what we hear from the psalmist. The voice of the Lord was upon the waters. The God of glory thundered over the pounding of those frightening waves. That same word came through Jesus, summoning Peter, commanding him, eliciting faith, no matter how small it may have been. The word of Christ Jesus sustains our faith even amid the fears that threaten to choke out life. In those pre-dawn hours in the boat and on the water, those were not the last time that Peter would hear the word of Jesus calling forth faith. After Jesus had been crucified and buried, there were similar dangers that confronted his disciples. Again, they were afraid. But the word came to them again in that situation, just as it had come to them on the water. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And then an even better word. Jesus has been raised. And then the command. Go. First, it was the command to those women. Go tell his disciples that he has been raised and is going ahead of them to Galilee. And then Jesus himself appeared to those disciples saying, go. And then finally, at the end of the gospel, according to Matthew, once again, that same command from Jesus, 
that calls forth faith in us. Go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you. That command is at the same time terrifying and comforting. There, in the dangers and the uncertainties of the future, we find our Lord going ahead of us, calling us to follow him. That same terrifying and comforting word has continued to be heard in the world today, and it alone can overcome our fears, pulling us out of our past failures with the promise of forgiveness, guiding us into a future that we can neither imagine nor create for ourselves. That word continues to call forth faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.